Thanks for joining me. This is Danny, and welcome back to the Real Tech series. We are in the middle of a hot, hot summer. As you can see, I'm quite hot, and I'm just getting ready to do another build and a few other miscellaneous things today. So I am building a factory. I'm going to be building it over here. And once again, we're going to be using our mine colonies guys to help. Well, one in particular, the builder. And well, and I guess her too, <laughs> Sadie, or our delivery people. And we're going to set up a factory right here, right at the end of this road. Well, at the corner of this road. And this is where we're going to be doing some tech in probably the next episode. Um, however, I made things a little bit difficult for myself. This build is going to require some blocks that we don't yet have. <laughs> and some that I'm going to have to work for. So you might have noticed that I've added a few trees over here. And I've also got a bee house. And that is because... Oops, Got some pollinated stuff there that I mean some cross pollinated stuff there that is because one of the materials I'm going to be using in in here is the forestry maple wood um, which is kind of sort of hard to get so um, we have to get our get our hands on a sugar maple sapling once we get one of these we'll be good to go um, in order to get a sugar maple sapling we need to get into some tree breeding um, now, I'm not going to get really detailed into tree breeding in this episode. I've done that before. I think I did kind of a tutorial style thing on tree breeding in a previous episode in another um, series. And I can probably link to that in the description if you're interested. Um, but um, actually, you'll probably know enough just from watching what we're going to do today. Because uh, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to cross a couple of trees in order to get the tree that we want. We want the sugar maple. Um, in order to get the sugar maple, we're going to need a red spruce and a mundane larch. Now, a red spruce is something that we can get. Um, that's just a vanilla tree. It's a spruce tree that's basically converted into a forestry tree. Uh, crossed with a mundane larch. And to get the mundane larch, we also need the red spruce again and apple oak. Um, that has a 10% chance of producing a mundane larch um, when it's cross-pollinated. So down here, I have a bee house. Um, now, the bee house is the cheapest uh, bee house <laughs> it's the cheapest thing that we can have bees producing things in so right now i've got a forest bee in here a forest queen and the only reason that it's here is in order to cause cause the tree to be cross-pollinated now butterflies the forestry butterflies will also cross-pollinate trees for us but they're very inefficient and they're very slow so we don't necessarily know that um we're gonna get what we want from them um, but now i've got some apple trees here or some oak trees here and I've got a spruce wood there and these are forestry trees so this is as you can see it's an it has apple oak leaves and that's from forestry and this one has the red spruce leaves from forestry although the wood itself is just the regular minecraft wood and in order to do that um, I did have to set up a little bit of infrastructure and this is kind of fun <laughs> because I had to I, I had to make some machines that require some RF, and we don't really have a way to produce RF, so I had to do it manually by cranking. So over here, I have a couple of forestry machines set up. Now, the carpenter I set up um, just, so that I, <clears throat> just so that I could make this, a portable analyzer. And it basically required these ingredients. Um, the ingredients get put down here. These are just kind of shadow ingredients. They're not really there. It's just showing the recipe, and then it needed two buckets of water, which I just put in there by using a bucket and right-clicking on the carpenter with the buckets um, of water, and that produced this guy, um, this analyzer, but it also needed RF. So I made this dynamo from the Ultimate Car Mod. This is probably the best early game. Well, I don't know about best, but it's <laughs> maybe the cheapest early game way of generating RF in this pack, and you do it by cranking this crank and it produces a little bit of RF while you're cranking it. I'm not sure exactly what the RF per tick is, but I know that it took a really long time to make this portable analyzer. I had to stand here clicking you actually have to hold down the right click button. You can't just right click on it. And yeah. So yeah, so I did that and that got us this portable analyzer. So now the portable analyzer, oh, we're out of fishing rods already. Jesus. The portable analyzer allows us to analyze bees or tree saplings. Now, if you put a vanilla sapling in here, um, it'll convert it into a forestry sapling. So that's really the only reason I made this portable analyzer. Um, however, in order to use the portable analyzer, you have to give it honey. So I made this centrifuge from forestry also, um, which also requires RF. So I had to do a little bit more cranking <laughs> with our little dynamo. Um, and I put a couple of honeycombs in there 
So if you put a honeycomb in there, actually, if we look and we look at honey, and it has to be forestry honey. I tried the Pam's Harvest Craft. Nope, <laughs> it didn't work. So I had to make the forestry honey. We just put any, just about any honeycomb will get us um, honey drops, 90% um, chance. So I put a couple in there and then I actually had to use another honeycomb to make this little bee house. Now, I don't plan on getting into bees in this series at all, um, other than for trees, <laughs> other than to, to crossbreed trees. So, um, oh, actually, we better throw these back in there. The only reason these bees are here is just to do uh, this. So now the tr the bee house actually was added to forestry for the purpose of crossbreeding trees because it doesn't really, it doesn't allow any automation. You can't input output with it um, and it's very limited in its usage, but it has a one advantage over the apiary and the alveary. And that is that even if you have an ignoble stock such as this, the queen will still last forever, so you, she will continue to produce forever and ever and ever, um, even though it's ignoble stock. Um, but we can't pull out of here with a hopper or pipes or anything like that, but whatever, we don't care. All we're trying to do is this, right? So now, when we look at this leaf here, we can see that it has some little dots on it, which means that it has some pollen from another um, thing. So we can grab our grafter, and we may end up, so this is a red spruce leaf, um, normally, uh, what the grafter does is, is it allows us to gra to get a sapling every time we break a leaf with it. So we will we will always get a sapling. Oh, boy, I, I almost I almost thought I was wrong for a second there. We will almost I mean we will always get a sapling whenever we use the grafter. So if we use the grafter on this pollinated thing, we may get something different. It looks it looks like oak from here. Um, however, if we um, I don't want to break another leaf here. Let's see. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. So it's another red spruce. So we got two red spruce, but as you can see, they do not stack. And that is probably because this one is a hybrid. It probably has some oak in it as well. So I could plant that. So whatever. This is a long, slow process, and I'm not going to do this all on camera. This is just something that I'm going to be just going to leave this here. In fact, I'm probably going to plant more trees. Because the more we have, the better chance there is that it's going to give us what we want um, sooner. So I'm just going to plant a bunch of these, and then we're just going to leave those back here. And we're not going to look at them for a while, <laughs> because we have other things to do. So another block that I am going to have in this build is dried bricks from Tinker's Construct. Um, I, you know, I, I did not pick these blocks out in order to make things difficult for myself. I picked them out because they look nice, <laughs> because I really liked the way they looked together in this particular build that I did. And it turns out, yeah, I picked out some really difficult ones. This one requires dried bricks, um, which is just clay um, put on a drying rack. However, it requires two minutes on the drying rack, so it's really, really slow. Um, however, I set up some automation, some really simple automation in here for this. And... Uh, again, this is just something I'm going to let it run in the background. So up here I've got a chest full of clay, a bunch of stacks of clay going into a hopper, and that hopper is going into a drying rack. So yes, you can hopper into a drying rack, and you can also hopper out of a drying rack, and it will not output to it until it produces its output, whatever its output is. So down here we have... We have seven dried bricks. Um, I don't remember how many I need exactly, but we're going to find out in a second because... Um, once again, um, as with the last build that I did in the previous episode, um, whoops, I did scan this build. I created it in a creative world, and then I scanned it. Oh, I've actually got a couple oaks. Yeah, okay. I scanned it, um, and so now we're going to have our builder build it for us. And I've added something to the pack that... Re so I, if you remember last time, we had our builder build this house for us. And it was a really cumbersome process because it had all of these chisels and bits. And she would only request one stack of bits at a time. So like for each block, she would be running back and forth and back and forth many, many, many times. And it turned out to be impractical. I ended up just kind of laying her off the job and finishing it myself. Um, however, we have a new mod in the pack and it's called Stack Up. And it's a pretty cool mod because it allows us to adjust stack sizes. So now check this out. Um, I've only used this for one thing, and that is for bits, for chisels and bits, because I, f I felt like this was reasonable and, and balanced enough. So now you may know that my bit bags always hold 4,096 bits per stack. Um, now, so do we. <laughs> Look at that. I can pick up 4,096. This is going to make it a lot more 
a lot easier for us to manage our our bit bags too. But what's really cool is our um, builder will also be able to grab 4,096 bits per stack. So this, and I did test this a little bit in creative mode. I, I gave our builder some, um, in a different world, of course, in a test world, I gave, gave the builder some other stuff to work with. Some just like test, some just crappy little test builds that I did. Um, and it worked out really well. So cool. So I'm going to go set up this build. I'm going to do it off camera uh, for two reasons. One, because it does get a little laggy while I'm um, looking at the, the, like the, the image of the build. And two, I don't want you to see it yet because <laughs> I want you to watch the build come together. And we're going to watch it in third person. <laughs> you go. You go. Okay, anyway, yeah, so we're going to watch this build in third person. Um, I'll be doing a little bit. The builder will be doing most of the work this time, which is the great. The build request has been made. We lost a, we lost one of our warriors. I don't know what happened. Probably going after some map. Oh, okay, healing self. So I'll have to find his drops. But anyway, um, this is the space where it's going to be. And if we look at our resource scroll, it will tell us everything that our builder is going to need. Uh dirt okay so it's <laughs> we're going to need some dirt we're going to need 5760 cyan terracotta chiseled bits okay so there's some chiseled terracotta um there's some chiseled glass of course all my windows are always chiseled glass and chiseled slate that is from rustic and some slate roof blocks i'm not actually using that for a roof but um we'll see what we're using that for and some chiseled bark. This is just the cork bark. It's kind of like a log, except it's bark on all sides. And then 289 <laughs> dried bricks. So that is going to take a really long time. And then 402 terracotta. So I'm, I'm going to need more clay. And let's see. Gray terracotta. Shingles. Yeah, we have a lot of terracotta in this. A couple of iron chains from Rustic. 34 lanterns. 316 maple wood planks and four oak doors now oak doors okay those are supposed to be maple doors i'm not sure why they're showing oak but our builder is going to come over here and it's going to and she's going to tear down the trees and probably dig oh i think i hear her, I hear her somewhere oh, she's standing there uh I, I thought i heard her digging somewhere but whatever okay so yeah that's going on and i am going to go collect some resources and then we're going to wait around once we get one maple sapling of course you know we can get we can get a tree farm of those going um now a lot of this stuff is kind of waiting game and things that are going to take me a long time so oh a butterfly died <laughs> so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you some clips of things that i did while we're waiting <laughs> so you don't have to sit around and wait i'm going to show you some clips of some things that I did since the last episode, some resource gathering I did, and some exciting things that happened. <laughs> so you can check that out now, and I will meet you back here. Wow, I finally emptied out my first limonite mine. This was all iron. I got the last 56. My first iron mine ever. This was from the first day. Well, actually the first episode, we found it. In the second episode, we mined it. Oh my gosh, I thought the day would never come. <laughs> I have finally found a kimberlite sap uh, sample. This is diamonds. And this is the second kimberlite sample I have found in all the time that I've been playing in this world. And I have found many, many samples. I've been doing much searching. This is the second kimberlite. Now the first, if you remember, if you are with me, um, the first kimberlite sampling I found contained no diamonds. Like, I hollowed out the area underneath it, and there was nothing there. So let's hope we get better luck this time. Whoa, that's a long way down. <laughs> I almost fell. <laughs> I can't even see the bottom. It's so far. Oh my gosh, I finally found a kimberlite vein. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, it took a while. I was beginning to think that I got stiffed again, because I was down here, down by bedrock, and swinging this thing, this prospector's pick all over the place, you'd think that it would have said there was something up there when I clicked there, but it didn't. And it's pretty much right above that spot. Let's see. 
I mean, obviously, it's gonna say phone. <laughs> yeah, okay, well. Let's see how big this baby is. So I've got luck three on this. I don't on my hammer. I ended up wasting two. <laughs> but whatever. We'll see what we get. Nice. We got 11 from four. <laughs> nice. Oh, exciting. So exciting. <sighs> Finally, man. All I've found like maybe five diamonds. I found three diamond samples, and then I found um, a crystal cave, and I got like two or three diamonds from that. I now have exactly a stack. <laughs> Hooray! Diamonds. Yay, I got it. Nice. That's the mundane larch, so we are almost there. Now we just need the mundane larch and the spruce. So I, I was actually going to start planting trees over here. Oh boy. So altogether, this build requires about a hundred stacks of clay. <laughs> uh, that's clay clay. So yeah, it was like 25 or so stacks of clay blocks. Oh boy. Oh. So I'm out, e I'm out here. This is my second trip. <laughs> this is my second time I've had to repair my Maddock. And now my inventory is full because I'm picking up all this mud. So I finally got all the clay I need. I was in that water for a long time. It's a good thing it's summer because <laughs> it kept me nice and cool. Uh, let's see what we got here. Another mundane lark. Probably a hybrid of some kind. Oh, we pollinated the dark oak. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to get us what we need. Oh no, raiders. Well, that I'm gonna end up hitting one of my guys. Okay. Oh, here comes some more. Holy wow, there's a lot of them. Oh my god, you're just standing there. <laughs> Watching your comrades get pegged off in battle. Only one barbarian left. Where is it? Oh, I see it. Probably stuck over here somewhere. Ah, there you are. Okay, we're stuck. Okay, yay! We have successfully... <sighs> Bit of a distraction. Still waiting for that maple wood. I'm good with... I'm good with clay now, and I'm making the terracotta and all that, which is taking time. Of course, the dried bricks are taking forever. I think I need to have, like, an array of those, because otherwise... Uh, it's just taking way too long. Well, I'm helping a little to make things go a little faster, because otherwise we'll be waiting a really long time. I'm not going to bother automating all this at the moment. Yay! I got the maple tree. Nice! Sugar maple sapling. Got it from this leaf right here. Nice. Okay, now I'm going to tear all these, all these trees down, and I'm going to put up an array of maple trees. So here is our first maple. <laughs> Hooray! Sugar maple. I'm going to graft these leaves so that I can get a bunch of saplings. Okay. <laughs> Making sure that didn't look like a sugar maple at first. I thought, oh, that's it. Okay. Five. That's actually, that's going to be enough for now, I think. Out collecting swamp flowers because these give me cyan dye. I need like almost a stack of cyan dye. And I don't have much cactus. Like, my cactus production is pretty bad. It's pretty pathetic. So I'm out here collecting these. There are lots of them here by the swamp. Whew, that's a lot of cyan terracotta. Actually, let me just double check to make sure, because I don't want to have to go getting more clay. So definitely 402 cyan terracotta. All right, here goes. Boom. Oh, and there ain't even enough room. So I'm getting all my bits ready. I'm so glad that we can have our builder work with chisels and bits now. <sighs> okay, so we need about four blocks of spruce wood. What do we got? Okay, we'll put that back. And in here, I, I brought over some of the racks from the warehouse. And I'm just filling this thing up, and then I'm going to take the... Once I have all the materials that I need in here, I'm going to packing tape them up and bring them over there. So that way, 
Our builder will be able to do the whole build at once. Oh boy, I finally got my first stack of dried bricks. That took so long. Because I, of course, need four stacks of these. But I added a whole bunch more drying racks, so yeah. Hopefully it'll go a little faster, but I have everything else. I've got all the cyan, um, terracotta, there's a lot of it. That's a lot, okay. And then I've got all, the, all our bit, our bits. We've got some glass for the windows. We have, actually this uh, spruce bark is also for the windows. And I don't know why we need so much of that either. Hmm. And then the slate and slate bits. This is for a certain accent in there. I'm not actually using any full blocks of slate. And then we've got our maple wood, our maple doors, and our terracotta shingles. Now these are quark and they're made like so. They basically, hey, oh, if you look to the left, you can see what they look like, um, but they're basically terracotta with kind of a shingle pattern. Um, I am actually using those for the roof. We have a lot of those. And then some iron chains from Rustic. Actually, we have those in here. But we'll be using those for something else. And some lanterns from Immersive Engineering. And then, of course, all the dried bricks that are <laughs> coming along very slowly. Our raiders, here they come. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Hey, don't shoot me. <laughs> I'll be shoot the back. raiders, not me. I'll be back. I'll be back. <laughs> There's so many. Jeez. I'm getting hurt more by my own guys than by the raiders. There's more. I haven't even started getting the messages saying that there's not many left. Getting a lot of messages from my builder. She's like totally spamming me. <laughs> I want those dry bricks. I'll be back. Why are you guys just standing around in the woods here? Lost. I'll be back. Some devoid of purpose. We have nothing better to do but just raid villages. I'll be back. For no apparent reason. I, she's in need of dried bricks. Look at this. <laughs> in need of dried bricks. I, I, I get it. I get it. You want your dried bricks. But, you know, you see there's a raid going on right now. What? They, put, they always put cobblestone in the water. <laughs> it makes it kind of hard for me to get around in my boat when they have cobblestone in the water. I'll be back. Hooray! I finally have everything I need for this build. It's all in here. In fact, I put a couple extra oak doors in there too, just, just in case. Because uh, it seems to be confused about that. Um, and whatever. If she places oak doors, I'll just replace them with the maple doors. So I'm hoping that this is going to be compatible with the packing tape mod. I have some packing tape in my inventory, which is made like so, along with a couple pieces of paper. Um, I right click, oh, shift right click. Yeah, there we go. And shift right click, and then I can pick these guys up without them dropping their inventory. This is, oh, it says no tool, okay. And then I'm just going to place these in the warehouse. And then our, our delivery people will be able to bring the materials to our builder. And she'll build this build. She already started the excavation portion of the build. And we won't have to do anything. We'll just be able to sit and watch. I just got a message that Danny Cam has just entered Danny DJ's colony. So when somebody enters my colony, I get warned. That's kind of cool. Um, Danny Cam is my cameraman. Okay, so my cameraman is all set up. Now all I, all I have to do is right click these and everything is in there. Nice! All the chisels and bits and all the blocks that she is going to need. So now we should see somebody come in here. One of our um, delivery people will eventually come over here and grab a stack of dried bricks because that is what Kylie is currently asking for.
Well, the build is finally done. Hooray! And it was... It was a bit of an exercise in frustration at times, because... I'll tell you, the builder... Sometimes she can be a little crazy, but here it is. Um, here's the factory. And I made a mistake. I made one mistake. It's supposed to be one block to the right. <laughs> it was supposed to be lined up with the end of this road, and it's not, which is going to bother me forever. But I'm not moving it, because it would be way too hard to move it. But this is the exterior. It's supposed to look kind of like an old western factory, or like an old western uh, thing. It's... That's a weird sound. It's really cold out here, so I'm going to go inside because it is warm in there. We had a lot of raids. I think this took so long. We're in the we're in winter now, as you can see. We started this out in summer. Uh, and, yeah, it's, uh, it's nice and warm in here. I've got a heating coil. We have a proper roof, so <laughs> that means that the heating coil will work. Uh, it might actually be, not be a terrible idea to have a different ceiling, but we've got two levels. Um... We have lots of these lanterns from Immersive Engineering. They are made with glowstone, so they do not produce any pollution. So we're not going to have to worry about that, although we will be probably producing pollution in other ways in this building um, because we are going to be doing a lot of Immersive Engineering stuff in here. Um, and these stairs are obviously custom-made with chisels and bits completely. Um, this part, like the grid thing, is glass. Um, it's actually a... I don't know what's going on out there, what that weird noise is, <laughs> or what George Baldwin is doing, but uh, I think I'm going to go kill some mobs so that he stops. Oh, I lost a lot of hearts. Uh, the last, it was during the last raid. I It wasn't from the raid, though. It was, uh, I had hyper hypothermia during the raid, so like while I was being attacked and while I was attacking, I was taking damage from being too cold. So these are the dried bricks from Tinkers. These are the maple wood planks that I worked so hard for. Actually, those dried bricks, th those were the biggest holdup of all. Like, they took so freaking long. Tinkers, man, it, it has some really nice decorative blocks, but man, they sh it makes you work for it. Not work, actually. I would say it makes you work for them, but it just makes you wait. It always takes so long to make. <laughs> so, yeah, this is the front part. Obviously, it's got an open kind of thing. We've got, like, some, you know, roof supports going on here and here, too. Uh, supporting the upper floor. Um, yeah, so anyway, so this is a glass. It is called... It is this thick grid glass. It's a chiseled variant of glass. And I got confused um, because... I have these windows, which are made of the streaked glass, which is another chisel variant. Um, it's just one pane of that, and then three rows of these uh, bark. It's the uh, cork bark. Uh, the resource scroll just mentioned glass. It didn't mention the fact that there were two different types of glass, and I kind of forgot. So... Uh, the builder kept asking for glass, and she was still on this first row down here, and she wanted this glass. And I'm looking, I'm like, hey, I gave you a bunch of this glass. Why do you still say you want glass? And it took me the longest time, so I, st I put these windows up myself down here, thinking, okay, maybe if I put these windows up, she'll stop asking for glass. She didn't stop asking for glass, and then finally I figured it out, like, oh, she wants this. So I could have saved myself so much time if I would have figured that out sooner, because I did all the windows by myself. Um, so anyway, so that's that. This is slate. Um, remember I said that I had was going to be using slate for something? This is what the slate was for. It's a, It looks kind of metallic, so I kind of wanted this to look like a metal stairs. And I, I thought that worked pretty well. It almost looks like a... What? Dude, I, I laid you off already. What? <laughs> I canceled the job. I don't know why she's asking for materials for this build. I already did everything. Like so. So anyway, so she. Once I finally gave her this, she built the stairs, which made me happy because I was really worried that I was gonna have to do these stairs again, and it was a lot of work. It was a lot of freaking work doing those stairs. Um, 
This up here is also slate, but it's two different types of slate. It's slate roof mixed with some of the regular flat slate so that we we kind of have that um, square pattern, which is sim well, the slate roof looks like this. Um, but I didn't want that continuous pattern in there, so I mixed it up. I just like threw in some bits of this stuff in there just to give it kind of a, a worn a railing sort of look. And again, I think it has kind of a metallic look. It looks like an old metal railing. Though, though, well, maybe not old, because it's not rusty, you know? So it's nice and clean. <laughs> and then we've got all these lanterns up here. I've got the iron chains from Rustic up on the top. I really like those. I've I've been I use those a lot in my other build too. They they're pretty cool for like hanging hanging lights um in a rustic looking sort of build. And then the upstairs is it's mostly the same as the downstairs except that the lights are hanging here. The roof is a little higher, so we'll have some of our taller machines up here. Um and that's it. That's the whole build. It's uh it's actually a fairly simple build with, you know, a little a few details here and there to give it a little bit of interest. Um, I kind of my favorite part is actually the front <laughs> like from the inside because it kind of looks like we've got pillars here and there's like those big supports um, and it actually it looks cool from up here too when you look from up here and then you've got the railing you can look down you know, so the boss can stand up here and watch the workers down there except the ones under there can might be screwing off so I'll have to go down the stairs every once in a while and peek around the corner so yeah there it is there's a factory build, and in the next episode, we are going to be... Man, I, that really bothers me. <laughs> that really bothers me that that's over one. It's uh, Yeah, there were supposed to be two blocks in between here, and it was supposed to be lined up with the street. So, But man, moving that over would be such a pain. I don't want to do that. So I think I'm just going to live with it. Um, we're going to have some a few more buildings. With a similar style, but probably more um, more like storefront, kind of along this road, and then here too. So that's kind of the plan here. Um, and then now, <clears throat> previously I had mentioned that I wanted to do some magnetic craft in this building as kind of our first like major tech. Even though we're pretty far into the real tech series, and we're just getting started on like our major tech. We we did. We are using uh, Magnetic Craft to do our ore doubling right now, but it's manual. Uh, there's one problem with Magnetic Craft right now, and that is that the authors are no longer supporting the mod. So, uh, unless it is open source, so it's possible that somebody else will pick it up, um, but I don't know at this point. Uh, so I'm a little bit afraid to get too deep into that mod right now. Um, so we may do immersive engineering first. Uh, we may start out with immersive engineering, and that may be our first automated ore doubling. I know we did that in the last series too, but it's it's a good mod. It's a good mod. We'll have fun with it, okay? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so that's on our list. I had magnetic craft, the factory build, check, we're done with that. Um, and then we're going to be doing auto ore doubling, not necessarily with magnetic craft though. Uh, and then maybe we might use magnetic craft for inventory. Maybe, maybe, we'll see. Uh, and then we're gonna do some cooking for blockheads, some pollution management. We've got, man, we've got some cloudy skies around here and a lot of pollution, a lot of pollution. So uh, we might wanna look into what we're gonna do about that. And diamonds, oh yes, I got my diamonds. Got my diamonds, you saw that earlier. And I'm thinking about making a season cal calendar with automated redstone. So something that would be a little easier to read than this. Um, it won't be. I was playing around with it earlier, and it's not going to be quite as cool as I w was thinking it would be. Um, but it'll be a good way for us to take a look at automated redstone and kind of get to know the mod and play around with it a little bit. And with the uh, displays, that will show us. I'm going to have it like show us a number for the season and then what day it is within the season so that at least we'll be able to see that oh we're on the 25th day of this of winter so we know that we only have you know x number of days left so i think actually i think there's only 21 21 days per season so we're on the 18th day of winter uh we're gonna work we're gonna do some airships oh and we're gonna play around with rustic um i'm kind of excited about that mod uh it's it has some fun mechanics like the, the and some nice decorative things that we're gonna play around with. And then we're gonna play with airships and cars. Uh, I don't know which we're gonna do first. 
Uh, maybe the airships first? I don't know. Um, so, uh, actually, let's just take one final peek at this build without our GUI on. So that maybe I can get a nice screenshot <laughs> for it. So that's the build. I've got a back door too, although I'm not sure if I will use that very much because it just goes off into the woods. <laughs> but maybe someday we'll have more stuff built back there. Yeah, I kind of like how the stairs turned out. Um, I was thinking about doing a railing too, but railings, it's hard to make a railing that doesn't look really jagged. So yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Um, but yeah, we're gonna play here next time. So if you do have any questions, comments, ideas, whatever, um, once again, I did use a lot of chisels and bits with this. I didn't really get into detail in how chisels and bits works and how I did all the things that I did. And that is because I have a chisels and bit series that pretty much describes the techniques that I used fairly well, like the windows, even the stairs. Um, those are all things that I've done similar things to before or similar things in that series. And, and I get really into depth on how chisels and bits works and from the basics and to some more advanced techniques. So you can check that out if you'd like, if you haven't checked it out already. And of course, I hope you join me next time when we get started with um, probably immersive engineering in this factory. Don't forget to click the like button if you did enjoy this. Thanks for watching. <laughs>